Okay, so what I'm doing is drawing this koi. And I'm just freehanding it because this is my reference, but I don't want to draw this exactly like this. Um, I mean, what you can do is, if you have a hard time, or if you just want to do it quick, is just get a piece of tracing paper, a light piece of paper, or even get your light box and put this on there, and then you could just trace that out really quick. Um, but I prefer to freehand it. And usually I use a mechanical pencil because I like to get a lot of line work in there. Um, and you don't want to push very hard because if you come back and erase it, you know, you don't want that line to stay there. Um, when you're drawing, you want to keep the points of your pencils really sharp. That way you don't have to push very hard when you're drawing. But I started with my mechanical pencil. And you can see how light it is. I can see it just fine. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to have to go with a softer lead. So here are my different pencils. Um, and they go, the hard leads have an H. Okay, this is a 4H pencil. Can't see that very well. And you can see with the hard lead that you're going to get a softer line. Um, it's going to look more like a gray, grayish kind of line, which is great um, to get my beginning drawing in here. Um, you can see I did some contour lines that are kind of circular here for the head. And the reason why I did that, I can even do one, throw one down in here just for the fun of it, is just so that I can get a feel, a 3D feel for the drawing instead of drawing it flat. Um, so that's... And, 4-H pencil, that's a harder lead, but you can see these are all pencils. This would be a 2B pencil. This is your typical pencil lead um, that you would use. I uh, usually like the pencils that you would get in school, or just a regular pencil. So already that is darker than the 4-H pencil. see that a little more and again you know I'm not pushing down very hard I did this circle right here again so I can get a 3d 3d feel from my drawing that way it doesn't look flat when I'm done with it okay so that's your regular pencil. Now, this is the softest lead I have. It's an 8B pencil. And this is going to be a really, really dark lead here. You know, this would be if you wanted to do some really dark, shadowy areas. This would be the one you want to use. And this, see, I'll just color in this eyeball here. So on the eyeball, the pupil here is solid black. So if I want a really dark black, I'm going to use this one. Give a really nice black shadow underneath the eye. The eyeball kind of pops out a little bit here, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a shadow back there. Alright, 
Now, did that just to show you kind of the different leads and what they do, but I'm not finished with my drawing here, so I'm going to do a little more drawing and come back and show you guys how to shade with these. Okay, I told you guys about how you want to keep a nice sharp point on your pencils. Uh, but the problem is, is that, you know, once you get in here and start working, it doesn't take very long for your pencil to get dull again, uh, especially when it comes time to do your shading. Which I'll just do a little quick demonstration here. Um, when you're shading, you don't want to hold your pencil like you do when you're doing a line. You actually want to hold it real loose and kind of back off it a little bit and then just do circles real lightly. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. You know, this is the hardest lead I have, so this is going to be a really light shade. See if I'm a harder line, I'm going to put it back on its point. But then to get rid of this line, because you don't want it there in a realistic drawing, you're not going to have lines. I'm going to flip it on its edge here and shade this out a little bit. Okay, so what you can do is, you know, if you have a pencil sharpener, you're going to eat your pencil up real quick. And, um, you know, art supplies aren't cheap. You know, so keep a little little sandpaper pad handy, and that way you can kind of just come over here and move your pencil around a little bit until you get a sharper edge. Or actually, why you're drawing and why you're shading. Instead of keeping your pencil in one location, you can actually, you know, use your fingers and spin the pencil around while you're shading. And that way, you'll keep your point um, from the paper. The paper will kind of act like your sandpaper and, and keep your point longer. And uh, just like in tattooing, if you have uh, what you would call holidays or missing spots, uh, you want to cover those areas again with real light pressure. And you want everything to look even. So if you're shading like this and you see that an area looks like a line or you got a missing spot, I uh, just go back in there and do circles over it until you get nice even shading. Now this fish is round so I don't want to do the same shading on the whole fish because this area right here is where a muscle would be or a highlight same thing over here on this fish even though it doesn't show it in my reference picture I uh, just from thinking about anatomy while you're drawing you know you can think about 
the anatomy of the fish and where to put your highlights so so I can come up to this area here because this is my hardest lead this is going to be my lightest my lightest pencil here my lightest shading so I'm going to come up to that highlight spot but because this is lighter this is going to be darker down here so I'm going to put my harder lead away and come back in here with a softer lead pencil again not pushing hard on the paper the way I'm going to make this darker is to go over it with some softer lead that's going to stay on the paper more and that's how I'm going to get my dark and light shadows this is why you want to use real soft pressure when you're drawing with your pencils um, if you come in here with a hard lead and cram in a line you're not going to be able to get that out and it's going to mess up your paper when you try to get it out and let me show you the difference so cram that one in and this one I'm just going to do real light pressure look I'll even get the same the same darkness of that line but with very light pressure all right now let me show you what's going to happen let me try to get rid of that line <clears throat> This is a kneaded eraser and this is like a, um, I would say putty or rubber or something that will pick up the lead. You can see that's why it's got swirly stuff in it because all the lead that's in this thing. And what you do is you just push down on the paper and it picks up, picks up the lead and makes your line lighter. And then you have your white eraser, which is softer. Um, you can come in here, try to get rid of that line with your white eraser. Okay. Another little tool you should have is a soft brush to clean off all your eraser bits from your drawing okay you can already see that that line's gone but with this line I'm gonna have to move to the hardest eraser which is typically a red or a green eraser try to get this line out see how there's still kind of a residue of a line there we have this guy for reference which is the shape and everything that I wanted but I found another reference and this is why I didn't trace it and I freehanded it so this is my other reference and uh, so I want to take this guy little little french fry guy you know and make him a little more intimidating a little more tough like this guy here so I drew him at first but I made him a little beefier and uh, changed a couple of things made some of his fins uh, bigger more kind of like a fighting fish than than a goldfish and you can see I have some lines I need to get rid of 
And this is why it's important not to push hard with your pencil. If it's not matching the paper, I can just come in with my white eraser, my soft eraser, and get rid of these lines that I don't want anymore. Um, some of the contour lines that I drew to kind of give me reference points, I'm going to get rid of those. I'm going to get rid of all the little lines that, that I don't want in there anymore. What you can do, if you feel like it, is when your eraser gets a little dirty, it leaves little smudges. So if that's a shadow area, instead of just erasing all that and having to come back in later to put it back in, just use your eraser to kind of smudge in your shadows. Say you get your shadow too dark and you want to take it out, that's where this guy comes in handy. Kind of roll it up, like if you were doing clay or something, and just push down on the area. You can see it's not getting rid of my shadows, it's just lightening them up a little bit. Um, if you're into it too, if you got, uh, grab it. You can either use your finger to blend in some of the stuff. You know, I like getting dirty, so I don't mind using my finger. Or you can actually use a stump, paper stump that's meant meant for that. For kind of smoothing out some of the shading in here. Alright. Um, let me get some more done here. Um, just to show you guys, there's some contour lines right here that I put in. These are going to kind of resemble the scales of the fish. You know, the fish is round, so my lines are round. They're going to curve. Again, kind of giving it like a 3D effect. That way, when you look at it, You're going to have a 3D feel instead of thinking that you're looking at a, a flat fish sticker. So, you know, I might blend these lines out or erase them a little bit, but I'm going to use them as a reference point for when I'm doing my scales. That way I know where the scales need to go and make sure that they line up. All of these lines up here that are going to be thicker because the fish is fatter and it's closer to you. So perspective is going to tell you to make this thicker here. So your scales are going to be wider and they're going to get smaller as it moves away from you um, towards the tail more.
Okay, I pretty much have my outline done. Um, now what I'm going to do is go in here and do some highlights and some shading. Uh, I'm going to do that with my different lead uh, pencils, my softer leads for the darker areas, and use my eraser to do the highlights. I drew a couple little bubbles here just so I could show you guys something. Um, again, when I'm shading this, uh, a koi is round or roundish, I should say, more of like a tube. Uh, so when you shade it, uh, you're almost going to shade it like if it was a cylinder. Um, and if your light source is coming from this direction, then underneath is going to be darker, you know. So I'm going to do darker stuff underneath here um, when I'm shading. But just to show you how to shade a round object, I drew some bubbles here. And I'll do the bigger one so you guys can see it. Okay. Uh, you got to pay attention to where your light source is at. Um, so if your light's coming from this direction on a round surface, like a bubble, you're going to get this little highlight area kind of where, where your light source is pointing. And then towards this area here, you're going to get your darkest shadow. But then right after your dark shadow, you're going to have another little highlight behind it. So if you just sh um, shaded this in all the way to the edge, you would have a very flat looking circle instead of a round object uh, like a bubble would be. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go from my highlight here and just do some, this is real light shading right in here. And then I'm just going to fill this area in, keeping it round, you know, keeping it so it looks like a bubble. Um, bubbles are, are real transparent. You can see right through them. So I'm not going to make this super dark. Uh, if you do super dark shading, then it's just going to look like um, a flat circle or, or a ball coming out of the fish's mouth. All right, so I'm, I am going to shade up in here a little bit, but you're going to see I'm going to use my eraser to get rid of that. All right, now right before my real dark shadow, it's going to be kind of a medium shadow. So I'm going to fill this area in some more until it starts looking round. And I'm going to come back in and do a, a little darker shadow in here. Just kind of work that in. So instead of it being three different shadows, it's one shadow. It's one smooth gradient instead of light, medium, dark. Like I said, it's transparent, so I'm going to just lighten this up a little bit with my needed eraser. That way that looks like a bubble and not a ball. And just a little side note here, if you're drawing circles and you split them in half twice, If this is a perfect circle, then all of these sides should be the same. One side, side should not be bigger than the other side. So if you have a problem making even circles, that's a little trick you can use there to make sure your circle is um, the right size and it's not bigger on one side or smaller on the other side. If you were going to cut this piece out and cut this little square out right here, 
you could put that square should be the same as this one, or I should say triangle. This little pie shape should be the same as that one, same as that one, same as that one. All right, so uh, the reason why I showed you how to do that is because I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, here's my highlight. This is where my light source is coming from. And then see like this would be a bubble. This head right here in the top of the head, I'm going to do like a bubble shape. So again, here's my highlight. I'm going to work some little light shadow into that. And then come in. And I'm going to use my different leads here so I can get that a little darker. And I'm going to come in and give this a little more darker shadow. And then a highlight around it. So that this gets that round shape that I want for the head. And then around the back, again, let me just show you this. With a kneaded eraser, if you need to do a real small area, you can just make it into like that shape or small shape. Or what you can do is get this is like a pencil, but it's got an eraser in it. So that way you can get get these really fine highlights where you need to almost like getting a little white line in there to give that that shape. Alright, so I'm going to work on that some more. Alright, uh, talking about light source again. Uh, the light source should be the same direction. So, if the light on the bubbles is going this direction, then the light on the fish should also be going this direction. Well, what happens is, if the light's going this direction, then behind this is a shadow. You know, the light will cast a shadow. So what I'm doing is the head on the koi would be bigger than the body. So that's going to cast a little shadow onto this side over here. Now this fin is actually behind on the other side of the fish so that's not casting a shadow on anything over here but this dorsal fin right here if the light was up here you would have your highlight And the fins are kind of transparent too, just like a bubble would be. So, you know, we want to do very light shadow in that, just to give it the illusion that it's a fin. And that it's transparent and, and feather, wavy-like. So, highlight up here, but this same direction is going to cast a shadow down in here so I'm going to use my softer lead pencil and put that little shadow down here and if I go a little darker on the shadows then I can lighten this up 